Encrusted with myth and legend, a man once described as British Secret Service's golden egg in 1980s Northern Ireland. A British spy at the heart of the IRA, Agent Steakknife was once seen as an indispensable asset. Today, the first part of a seven-year-long investigation concluded he may have cost more lives than he saved, involved in unjustifiable crimes and murders under the state's watch. Okay, when Freddie Scappatici was named by the press as steak knife in 2003, he denied it. I'm telling you that I'm not guilty of any of these allegations. Today, Operation Canova's first report into steak knife's actions stopped short of naming him, its hand forced by the MOD. Scappatici was instead described as a critical person of interest at its heart. And what it did say was that steak knife was linked to 14 murders and 15 abductions that security services could have and chose not to prevent some of his crimes. The absence of an effective legal and policy framework governing the use of agents during the Troubles was a very serious failing. It put lives at risk, it left those on the front line exposed and let down, and it fostered a maverick culture for some where agent handling was sometimes seen as high stakes dark art and was practiced off the books. The IRA issued a detailed statement claiming that the three men had been IRA members working for the security services. Among those security forces failed to protect, people the IRA accused of passing information on to the enemy. Its feared internal security unit, otherwise known as the Nutting Squad, tortured, murdered and abducted more than a hundred. Steak Knife was a key figure at its heart but his intelligence was deemed too important to risk compromising. Well, it was a deliberate failure. People were making conscious decisions not to stop people from being abducted. When we knew that people were being tortured, we didn't go, whether, whether they were agents or not, we didn't go in and try and rescue them. Each case was different. In some circumstances, we knew where they were, or we knew who was doing the torturing. And we didn't pursue that. We didn't pass that information on. Of the Nutting Squad's murders, not one has resulted in prosecution. A fact Operation Canova's report blamed on Northern Ireland's poorly resourced and, as they put it, glacially slow justice system. A lawyer for the families of 12 victims today described the state and the IRA as co-conspirators in the murder of its citizens. Deaths were preventable. That's not just uh, negligence or some sort of carelessness. That's outright complicity. You have a bizarre, horrible takeaway point that's now made, and that is a government, a state, is actively complicit with a terrorist organisation in killing its citizens. The government said it wouldn't be able to comment until Operation Canova's final report and related litigation is complete, but expressed sympathy for the victims of the Troubles. Canova's lead had called on it to apologise for failing those it had a legal right to protect. Canova also called on the Republican leadership to apologise for the provisional IRA's abduction, torture and murder of those it accused. In a statement today, Northern Ireland's First Minister said this. The injustices and the tragedies of the past have left a deep legacy of suffering and trauma right across our society. And we must never forget those who have died or been injured and their families. I am sorry for all the lives lost during the conflict without exception. The final report, expected to officially unmask Steak Knife, will be published later this year. Its secrets and answers so desperately awaited by families who, for so long, have faced nothing but silence. Well, earlier I spoke to the former Justice Secretary, Conservative MP Sir Robert Buckland, who is now the chair of the Northern Ireland Affairs Select Committee. I began by asking him whether he was surprised by the strength of the language in the report. What we've seen in this interim report is a pretty damning indictment, both of provisional IRA and indeed the UK government, for their behaviour during these times. And I'm glad that the report has provided that directness, that honesty, because that's what families, frankly, deserve. Did the British government and the IRA conspire in a cover-up? Well, it's looking uh, like uh, all the norms and the procedural um, necessities uh, were dispensed with. 
Um, and you can make explanations for that, bearing in mind the pressures that everybody was under at that time. But it doesn't escape the fact that the high standards we should expect were not adhered to. Uh, and that means that this report uh, makes for very uncomfortable reading, uh, I think, all round. So what should happen? The calls in that report for there to be not just an apology, uh, but an apology on the scale of the one that we saw for Bloody Sunday, but also a, a wider recognition that there needs to be access to information and free and frank access to that information for uh, victims and their families uh, seems to be to be something that we need to get on with. What about victims' families who want justice? Is that just impossible? Well, look, I, I think no degree of due process or justice process will ever restore uh, uh, the full um, uh, position to those families. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a process that can never, uh, ever compensate for what happens. And, and frankly, I'm really uh, concerned about the dreadful prospect that many families will go to their graves not knowing the full facts about what happened to their loved ones. They are, at, at the very least, owed that. The, the other issue, obviously, in, not, not in the Northern Ireland context, but in others around the world, is to what extent this kind of thing could happen again. The law still allows agents to break the law. How, how sure are you that this couldn't happen again? Well, I think one of the most important functions of Operation Canova in the reports is that not only should it reveal our history, but it also should be a warning to us here in the present and in the near future that we have to do everything we can to avoid seeing uh, this sort of scenario develop again. Uh, and that's why I think reports like this and days like this are important reminders of the dangers of any state uh, uh, in veering away from the rule of law and reminders of the fact the provisional IRA behaved in a way that was despicable, uh, wicked, and led to the deaths of hundreds of innocent people.